Hey guys, it's Steve on the Guru Brew. Have you ever thrown something in the trash and then emptied out the recycle bin only to discover that it was an important picture or document that you can't get back easily and you wish there was a way that you could pick your trash? Well, it turns out that there is a way you can pick out your trash. There's some twists and turns to using software to do this. First, we're going to start out with a little bit of theory, just enough to get you educated what's possible and what not. And then we're going to get right into the software, and I'll show you how you can try to get your files back that you deleted. So hang out with me, and we'll get started. Okay, before I get into showing you how to retrieve data from something that you deleted by accident or otherwise, I think it's important to describe to you how a storage device saves, retrieves, and deletes data. That way you can better understand what is possible and what is not. You know, this isn't a 100% scientific thing. It has to do a lot with the algorithms and the way the operating system works is to if you can get something back or not that was deleted. There are many reasons why and I think that this illustration will give you a better clue as to why. So let's go ahead and draw a hard drive space. Now this can be a flash drive, this can be a hard drive, whatever is storing our information. I've drawn a representation of a hard drive just by drawing a box. Now this is a brand new hard drive and there's nothing in it. When you buy it, it comes this way. Now I'm sure you've been in computers long enough to know that you must first format a hard drive before using it. And when you format a hard drive, what it does is it divides this up into tracks and sectors and I'm just simply illustrating this by drawing lines so that you can see the little individual cells and this is a way for the operating system to better keep track of the hard drive by using cells let's number these cells one two three five six seven eight and so on so now our hard drive is formatted with the tracks and the sectors. Now one more thing happens when you format. It creates what's called an index or a table of contents and I'll illustrate that over here. Now our index has to be saved to the actual hard drive so that has to occupy at least one of these squares. It might take up two squares, three squares, four squares it adjusts itself appropriately to the amount of information needed. For illustration, let's go ahead and save our index on cell number one. And I'll illustrate that by just putting a one up here. So now this is the table of contents to our empty hard drive. The only thing that's on it is this number one, our index. Okay, let's go ahead and save some pictures. Let's save a picture of our car, okay? I want to save a picture of our car so the car goes into the index the operating system looks at our hard drive and finds a perfect match to fit in one of these squares that is appropriate to its size let's say our car can fit in square two here just fine so it takes uh, square number two here's our car I'll just write car in there and it gives that number of the cell to the car there it is. Let's save a picture of our plant. It's kind of weird, but that's what came to mind. I take a picture of a plant. It looks out on the uh, hard drive for an available space. It will probably take square three, but it could be square four, five, six, seven. It could be any of these. And as files come and go, it reuses the squares, okay? Look, for simplicity, let's just say square three is available for our plant. And I'll write plant in there and I'll take that number three. Let's go ahead and save one more file. I have a picture of my house that I want to save to my computer. And the house is a really big picture. It's going to actually take up more than one square and that's fine. 
it just looks out on the hard drive and finds the two squares that it needs to store the picture of the house. Let's say it takes up four and five. And then it assigns square four and five and our index is our house. Now, it's not a perfect world where it just takes up the next square, but this is, again, just for illustration purposes. Now, every time you bring up, you want to see the picture of the plant, it comes over here to the index, it finds out it's in square three, and then it loads the picture of your plant from square three, okay? Let's say you go ahead and you delete a picture of the plant. You just don't need it anymore. We're going to go ahead and remove it from the index. That's the first thing that happens when you delete something. So the picture of our plant is located right here. It erases the plant from the index, but it doesn't touch that square. It just leaves it alone. The plant, the data for that picture is still in that square, even though it's not in the index anymore. And that is how you can recover something. If, if the index no longer lists it, but it's still in that spot, you can get it back. It'll just rebuild the index. But the way that computers work and the operating system and the way the storage works, it reuses spots. So you might have a 50-50 chance. Next time you use your computer, let's say I want to save a song, okay? I have a song I want to save, and guess what? It could come out and it could go to box 6, 7, 8, or even 12. Chances are it's going to reuse something. And look, we have an empty spot in 3. So our song might take that spot, our third spot, which was the plant. But what happens is the song takes over that square. So what's happened to our plant? It's gone. And it's replaced with our song. So that is the reason why you might not be able to recover um, some data is because these spots are reused. Now, like I said with the picture of the house, the house actually occupies two spots, four and five. It could be many of these. And a lot of times what will happen is part of it may be gone. Let's say I deleted my house It takes it from the index, but my house is still in four and five. At this point, I can still recover it. But if I save another photo, and let's say it can fit in one of these squares, in one of the home squares, let's say it can fit in number four, it's gonna go ahead and steal that four spot. So now, four, five, five has half a house. <laughs> And here's your photo here. So in essence, part of our house is still intact and the first part of the house has been replaced by our new photo. So I hope you can see why really you have a 50-50 chance of getting something back and why things are overwritten and reused. Let's go ahead and go to our computer now, and I will describe how to go ahead and find out what's available to you. Well, now that we've explained a little bit about how storage devices work and some of the challenges in trying to get data back, let's go ahead and actually do it. I'm going to point you to a piece of software that is free of charge by Pureform. It's called Recuva, and I'll put a link in the description. They have a paid version as well as a free download and their support team can help you with the uh, $20 price tag if you should decide to buy it and support the software vendor, which is a good idea. Anyway, we're at the Pureform site and the Recuva software. We're going to go ahead and click this download link here and you can see where there's a free version as well as the professional version. Oh, that's actually $25, but still, that's a pretty good deal if they save you even one time. 
Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take one of these download links and save it to my hard drive. And uh, as soon as it saves, I'll be back. All right, well, the software is finished downloading, and I have a copy of it right here on my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and double click this and just install it in the regular manner. Yes. Select my language, next. I'm going to go ahead and just leave all these set on, install. Now, incidentally, this Recuva is actually a second product of Pureform, and Pureform created the C Cleaner, which is another really great program. So, this company has really got some great products. Let's go ahead and finish. Now, I went ahead and installed this software on the computer that we're going to be searching for deleted files. But I will warn you at this point, back to my whiteboard illustration that I did earlier. If you install this program on the actual hard drive that you're trying to recover files from, there's a chance that just installing this program can actually take up one of those little cells I was telling you about with this program. So, a better idea if you really want to get back as much as possible would be to take the hard drive physically out of the machine and put it in a USB enclosure and retrieve the data that way. That way you won't be installing new things on the drive that you're trying to recover and lower your chances of recovering more data. For illustration purposes, we're just going to go ahead and use the machine that we're currently trying to scan. So as you install the program, it asks you what type of files you're trying to recover. And this is pretty self-explanatory. You know, if you're just looking for wedding pictures you threw away or music, documents, videos, emails, that sort of thing. Or you can just look through it all. That's what we're going to do in this illustration. Now it asks you where it might be located. Now if you have multiple drives, you're going to want to use this feature. And it's a good idea to go ahead and check, check this anyway. I'm going to click that and hit Browse. And you can see that I have multiple hard drives on this machine. I have C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. And you know, some of those could be a flash drive. So if you just wanted to check a flash drive in the USB port or something like that, you could just click it. We're going to go ahead and look at our actual C drive. So I'm going to select that and hit OK. Let's go ahead and hit Next. And you can see there's also a button for CD and DVD use. Now, I like to go ahead and enable the deep scan. This takes a little bit longer, but it's a more in-depth report. So go ahead and click the enable deep scan and hit start. Now, this process does take some time, so you're gonna have to be patient. You can see that it's estimating 10 minutes. So I'm gonna look, go ahead and let this go, and I'll be back as soon as it finishes, and then we'll pick it up from there. Okay, my computer's now done scanning and I wanted to mention real quick as I had previously said moments ago if you want to maximize how many things you can get back it's best to put the hard drive in a physical enclosure and use another drive for the operating system and I described that process and I'll put a link up here in the corner you can click that and if you want to take your hard drive out of your computer that's how you would do it so just follow this link up here okay let's get on with it the uh, Pureform Recuva has finished let's go ahead and maximize it and I like to switch to advanced mode right here, this little button right here. You don't have to. You can just go on, look down through if you'd like. But let's go ahead and click on that. It gives us a bit more information. Now, if you look through here, you'll see that these are color-coded. And the green means that chances are they're ready to recover and they can be recovered. And you can see right here, the comment says, no overwrite clusters detected. 
And back on that whiteboard, when we talked about reusing clusters, that's what that's all about. So now it probably makes sense to you. If you look at this one that has a red mark next to it, it says that the program was writ overwritten by this program here, and we can actually resize this so we can actually read what it says if we want to by pulling out these cells. And the idea is to go ahead and look through here I can see that uh, it found 1,024 out of 58,000. So, you know, you look down through here and you can figure out what you'd like to recover. By clicking on these categories up here, you can sort by file name, which will put it in alphabetical order for you. Or you can click on the path, and the path is where it was last known to be residing so for instance like your photos or your documents folder you can look through that you can also click and choose last modify and that will sort it by date and then they also give you the size I think one of the best ways to use this tool is to go ahead and sort things by the state you know, there's no point in looking through the items that are not recoverable. Let's go ahead and click this state button and that'll move all the ones that are most likely to be recovered at the very top of the list. That way I'm not looking at things that can't be recovered. You can see all these have green marks now and the red ones are near the bottom. And if I were to look for pictures, this is a dead giveaway that this is a picture. It's labeled as a JPEG. And sometimes when you click it, you can actually see a preview over here. You see I just clicked on that one, and it's actually a picture of my guitar. I remember throwing that away a while back. Anyway, um, not all of them will preview. There's another one. And the idea is to go ahead and click these boxes and check them if you want to go ahead and recover them. Don't bother checking them if they're red, but if they're green, you can go ahead and click the little box. And then the next step is to just go over here and click the Recover button. And it's best to recover them to a, another disk or flash drive. In my case, I have a second hard drive, so I'm going to go ahead and just save them to my D. And I'll make a new folder and call it, re I'll call it Recovered. I made a new folder and I'm going to hit OK. And you can see it went ahead and took those five files and it had already did it in 0.11 seconds. So that was easy. And then I can just go into my computer, find that D drive, find that folder I made called Recovered. And those are the five files that I just recovered of my guitar. So, you know, it's a great tool and I do like it more so than other programs because it gives you the state which is an estimate of it can be recovered or not. If I look on down through my list, I'm near the top here, these are all green ones that have a good chance of being sa resaved. But as you see, not down too far, right to here, starts getting into the poor to recover and that is the yellow or orangey looking ones. So out of this whole big list, there's not really that many that can be recovered. But, uh, you know, as I showed you on the whiteboard, you have a chance, a 50-50 chance, just depends on how many times you use the computer before you decided to recover the files. Well, I hope this video has helped you out and you have luck trying to locate files that you threw away by accident. I think we've all done this in the past and it can be real devastating if it's an important photo such as a baby photo or a uh, wedding photo, that sort of thing, or even documents that you spent hours typing up. So thanks for watching. Uh, leave us a comment if you have questions. Don't forget to thumbs up and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.